Hello, my name is Christopher. <laughs> can you make a, can you clap? Huh? No? My name is Christopher Hotteft. I run uh, Lysvaka restaurant here in Bergen and we serve, you guessed it, seafood. I will show you around the restaurant, my neighborhood, maybe a couple of recipes. Let's get to it. At Lysvaka we try to be a, um, like a very local seafood restaurant, but trying to look forward instead of looking back at tradition, we're trying to look at what a seafood restaurant in Bergen should be. A friend of mine who was, had been working in Copenhagen came up here and helped open. And we were joking like, yeah, Copenhagen, you guys all go foraging all the time. You go forage everything for your restaurants. But here in Bergen, we go foraging. So we go down to the fjords and we forage our shellfish and seaweed and all that stuff. And one night we were maybe a little drunk and I wrote it on Twitter, the founder of neo Fjordic cuisine. Ha ha ha. And a couple of days later, it appears in, the, in, in, in a New York newspaper, it says, the sophisticated neo Fjordic cuisine of Chef Christophe Huatuft. And we're like, wow. Okay, so now we have to actually deal with this. What it has started to actually mean is that we, it's kind of an, a micro regionality. So we're in the fjords, we're 20 minutes out to the ocean, one hour up to the mountain plateaus. The region here is vastly different from the eastern part of Norway or the northern part of Norway or Copenhagen or Stockholm and anything that is coined Nordic. I try to use that as, as a guideline for what we do. Like, <laughs> it always sounds stupid because we say, well, uh, is this dish uh, neo fjordic And uh, if the answer is yes, then great, we found a new classic. But if it's not, then, you know, like it's not a, it's not a hundred a definite thing, but it's, it's a nice way of, of looking at ingredients and products and techniques and recipes and say, is this natural for where we are? If our diver finds a lot of mahogany clams, then that's a product that we should use, regardless if it's traditional cuisine from this region or, or not, because we need to utilize what's sustainable and around us, and we have the ability to create something that is for the future. I have my diving gear in the boathouse of my diver. I call him my diver. He's kind of his own diver, but he, dive, he supplies us with shellfish, so he's my diver. So I can put my diving gear on and, and, and go diving with them. And what we see there is, you know, I romantically, you know, that would be the inspiration for the dishes or whatever, but I'm not that romantic. You go 10, 15 meters down and there's scallop, crab, mahogany clams, all kinds of seaweed, all kinds of weird looking crab and, and starfish and crazy, you know, sea urchins. And it's all there and you pick it and you taste it and all of a sudden you find something that, like you find a, a, a seaweed that tastes like truffle. And then you take that home and you start using it. The scallops that we get from uh, Knut Magnus, our diver, are always on the menu in some form. First thing, we uh, use the charcoal grill a lot and these are the scallop. We just split them down the middle. They're not the biggest ones, but they're very, very fresh. I like to have a little bit of a, like a toothsomeness or like a bite in the scallop, so I cut it straight down the middle. And then I have a little bit of oil right here, just a drop, a little bit of salt. The scallop are uh, naturally very sweet. Like when you grill them, you bring out that sweetness. So not too long. If you cook the scallop through, it makes it bouncy and chewy. So we just want to get a little heat. It's very hot, so I'm not, not going to touch it. I'm the kind of a, a executive chef, so I have very soft fragile fingers, while Justin here and Vincent, they, they would be able to pull it off, you know. We have this contraption for our grill. So it has nice color, but it's not cooked all the way through, but it's hot all the way through. So here. So I pulled up a plate here. We start with a small dollop of a cucumber seaweed mayonnaise. We arrange the scallop around the mayonnaise so that they all touch it a little bit. And when you grab your fork, every bite you take gets a little bit of everything on the dish. It's annoying finishing a dish and then being told that you should have had a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this on the fork, you know. I have these cucumbers here. You're just going to put a little incision in them. 
This has no effect except making it a little more laborsome and, and silly, but and we have some, uh, some grilled cucumber that we marinate in um, a dill oil, and then we finish it with a little bit of dill. So this is how you're able to charge a lot of money for this dish. If you do it at home, you can make a nice dill mayonnaise, an acidic cucumber salad, and grilled scallop, and you will basically have the same dish. I got into cooking a little bit through the back door. Didn't really do anything. I was a no good, useless punk rock kid that uh, only wanted to party. And by coincidence, a friend of mine did some catering and he asked me to help him. I started writing articles about, you know, recipes and cooking and lied and cheated and, and bullshitted my way through that. And then that led me to be hired on as a chef that obviously the restaurant failed. And then I started my uh, proper training. So I lied and cheated myself into cooking. I kind of still do. Mahogany clams are these old clams that have a super intense flavor because they grow slow and they're very briny. This guy here, you can count how old it is if you count all these, which we're not gonna do because it is probably up towards 200 years old. They are known to be 400 years old. And uh, you probably won't be able to find these at the supermarket near you, but you can use a clam or maybe an oyster, even a scallop you can use for this dish. Anyway, we stab it right here. This is where he puts his foot out and walks along the sand. It has two muscles holding it together, fighting my, my knife here. One here, and then one directly on the opposite side. So you just disconnect them and you can open it. See right here and right here. It's a big clam. The size of it gives it its own set of challenges. I like to clean this the way the Japanese clean some of their clams, which is basically you take off the foot right here. But now, now it's contracted. It's all super tight because it's trying to hide in its shell. So this ridge here, the foot, is very dense. I clean off this. This you can use for a stock. And then I butterfly it. You don't have to do this, but it, it makes it a little milder and more appetizing to eat. So now, I cut along the, the foot, and it'll give you three pieces. And then I slice it. We get them straight out of the water, so 20 minutes before they arrive here, they're in the ocean. I like serving them raw. They get very chewy if you cook them. And also, they, they have a little bit of a crunch or like a, a toothsomeness when they're raw. I have the grilled cabbage that Lars grilled, some diced raw turnip, a uh, flower, a ringblomst, we call this in Norwegian. And I have some seasoned uh, buttermilk. I add a little bit of buttermilk to the clams. The buttermilk gives it acidity and also a little bit of uh, body. Add the turnip dice, a tiny bit of salt, a bit of chives, and a bit of chopped parsley. Give that a little stir. Then we make a pile of this in the bottom of the plate, like that. We dress the cabbage in a bit of this buttermilk. Then we fold that around the clams. We take these flower petals, honestly, because it makes it look nice. Here we go, that's how you cover up a <laughs> mahogany clam with grilled cabbage. The restaurant is so politically neutral that you get away with anything. We did a fundraiser for a Gaza hospital, we do a lot of volunteer work, and try to add some political awareness into the restaurant so we don't just use it to feed rich people. I'm gonna throw some garlic and thyme in here. We normally work as a team like this. Yeah. Are you ready, Chef? I'm ready. Let's do it. There you go. You can manage the butter yourself. Good job, Justin. Thanks, Chef. Good teamwork. Couldn't have done it without you. That's right. Never forget that. So we try to be uh, socially aware and add a bit of uh, anarchism and you know punk rock mentality into it, but hide it under layers of you know luxury and finesse. <laughs> yeah, that's the line. <laughs> yeah. Now I would I would love to combine that being a 
a, a nihilist and a chef. Thanks for watching. If you're ever in Norway, please come check us out at Lysvaka here in Bergen. Bye bye. Let me get my smile. When I was in, I was in Tokyo and I bought my wife a smile, like a plastic uh, contraption that pulls your mouth, your, the, the, your mouth out to, to, so you can work on your smile. So I need to, I feel like I need to do that. I need that. Okay.